Hi, I'm Robert Joseph, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this saucy little number. So I call this the sling sack. It's pattern number 85, and I'm just going to turn it around here. Obviously, we have a pouch front like a lot of my suits do. Um, I'm going to turn this around so you can see the back. And basically, the back actually, it's meant to be worn without a strap, but I have a piece of clear elastic here attached um, just for display purposes. Um, however, if you want to put this strap here in the center back, you can, and there is a pattern piece for that as well. Um, and I actually have uh, the piece here. I go over that in the tutorial, how to attach this to the back. Um, so I call this the sling sack because I designed it to not really be worn with the center back string or G string if you want to call it that. So I've actually designed it with an actual sack type um, with elastic that goes all the way around the outer sack and um, the bottom of the waistband. Now this waistband has a one inch wide waistband um, so you'll need that. If you want a slimmer waistband you can also make it with a three eighths wide elastic that I actually use um, around the pouch you could do that but understand that your uh, the width of the band will actually be wider unless you actually shorten the height of that band yourself I do not go over that in the tutorial however it is um, doable so this is a really fun and quick suit to make even though the uh, tutorial is almost an hour long once you get going on a suit like this you could make a few of them in an hour it only requires about a quarter yard of fabric until you get to the larger sizes which actually require about a half yard and that's just because of the height of the pattern so with that, we'll get right into the tutorial after the intro. to get started but I want to talk about the pattern first just for a few minutes and I've saved um, uh, my large print um, before cutting the pattern out because I wanted to explain that if you are um, needing a larger pouch area but you are a smaller waist or vice versa um, you can actually cut here the correct waist size that you need here um, extra small through double x large um, but when you cut here for the cat pouch say if you're a size medium in the waist but maybe you need a large pouch then you'll be cutting your medium and as you come into the curve you will just gradually curve right into that large pouch and then curve around and slowly come back up and then you can end back at the medium so um, no matter what waist size you are you can um, change the pouch size for whatever size you want just be sure when you line it that you're doing the same thing with the lining okay so um, I'm going to remove this and we'll talk about the pattern um, a little bit more so here I've cut the pattern out and I have um, kept my elastic measurements and on yours I corrected it here I had to write um, which elastic we're going to be using I'm going to be using one inch wide elastic for the waist and then three eighths wide elastic for around the outer pouch and bottom of the waist so on yours I corrected that I actually put the measurement right here in uh, the writing okay so always have that on hand so for the main body this is the waist area and of course this is the pouch and I always make a medium because that's what fits my uh, mannequin so uh, there's just really one important thing for you to take note of and it's this notch here these triangles here are called notches and they help us match and in this case this is going to help us match the elastic that goes around the lower waist and outside of the pouch so this notch over here that's in the center that's just to help you line everything up in the front but this notch is the most important 
important. So be sure to cut that notch out. And you'll see me do that when I cut the lining. So um, today, this is also lined. I have a separate lining piece but it should match your pattern perfectly in the front. And that's just so you don't need the whole thing lined back here. Now you don't have to line if you don't want, but be aware that if you don't, you'll have that seam on the inside that might be irritating. So I'm gonna line, but today I'm not gonna line with a uh, different fabric. I'm actually just going to line with this fabric here. And this is a very lightweight, super stretchy jersey knit. It's 100% polyester, and there's probably some um, spandex in there as well. So it's very lightweight, and so I can actually use it to line uh, the front pouch with as well. I have another strip here, and this is actually for um, those of you that would like a center back strip, so it's more kind of like a G-string. So however, this is actually designed so that you can actually wear it without the string in the back. So this cups around and kind of holds you in pretty securely with the elastic here. So just FYI. And I'll show you here, I have, um, this was one of my first, um, let me move the patterns out of the way so you can see this. This was actually one of my first go rounds, my first samples. And what I did was, and also I had the clear elastic for show on my uh, mannequin. This um, piece here, this piece just kind of goes from the center back down to the bottom of the pouch. And I'm using clear elastic, and you could also do that too, using um, this piece for the measurement of that elastic. Of course, you can change that for your own um, preference. But today, I'm actually going to cut this out of the fabric to show you how to actually do that and get a smaller string if you would like the string. But again, this is designed um, to be able to be worn without the center back string. Okay, so that's all I have about the pattern. Uh, let's get into the cutting. Okay, so I'm back really quick because, um, just before I get into the fabric cutting, because I realized that I had not changed my grain lines. So if you saw in previously, I had the grain lines going up and down this way. Um, but I needed to change those, I didn't realize that I did. On your pattern, everything is um, changed, is perfect. So these grain lines are, you need to lay this in the greatest a stretch of the fabric. Um, and that's actually usually the width of the fabric. Fabric, So you wanna make sure that these arrows run selvage to selvage. Okay, so that's the greatest stretch. Um, so that's for the main pouch and the lining piece. And this piece I actually left um, uh, the way it was. And so we'll also cut this on the greatest stretch. However, this piece doesn't really matter. Um, I'm assuming that most of you will probably use the elastic or won't um, have the strap in the back. However, if I were to change it so that the greatest stretch was going across the narrow part here, um, you would actually have to buy more fabric just because of the height of this piece. So understand, you'll see me lay it out and I'm gonna be using this fabric here. What I mean, uh, salvage to salvage is you see the sides of the fabric where it's kind of curly um, also you may see some holes that are on the side of the fabric those are called tentering holes um, that is the the way you will lay the fabric so we'll go here this is salvage to salvage but I have it folded in half so it'll, we'll lay it the width and you'll see me lay that out so I just wanted to mention that because in the previous video when I talked about the uh, pattern um, I had the grain lines going the wrong way, but your pattern um, is all good to go. So with that, I'll get right into the fabric cutting.
Okay, we've got everything cut out. Let's start putting this together. So I'm going to set the elastics aside and also the back strap. And I can take these pattern pieces off. And we're actually going to work with the front pouch. We're going to sew up that center front seam here and here. And we're going to do that all together. Now you can do them separately and then match them, but I like to sew everything on that one center, center seam here. So I cut this with the face side uh, facing out or the right side of the fabric. I call it the face side. So I'm just going to carefully kind of lay these separately and I'm going to lay matching the face sides to face sides. I'll move this up a little bit here. Okay. Try not to stretch your fabric as you do this. I'm using a really stretchy lightweight fabric so it actually stretches a lot so you just have to um, be careful of that. Now if you're going to be using this as some type of swimwear or you want something that is going to uh, hold a little bit better or have a little bit more body then uh, go ahead and use a swimwear fabric which is basically your lycra. Okay so this is the actual lining and I'm doing the same thing putting face sides to face sides right and since I want the lining and the uh, garment seam to be all together just like in my other videos um, I'm going to lay this right on top of each other see how lightweight this is it really just anytime I touch it it moves so just be aware of that but this is a really stretchy fabric so if you like it if you like um, fabric that is really kind of stretchy and kind of contours everything this is the way to go with a super stretchy fabric like this now I have this laid going the wrong way because I want to sew from the bottom all the way up to the top and I can't really pin that way so I'm gonna flip this over for myself I should have done that but it's okay you may have to do that as well so I'm gonna get this laid out and make sure that all of your edges are really close together here without stretching that and I'm going to pin this around the outer edge and I like to pin maybe about an inch away from that edge that way I don't really have to remove the pins as I'm sewing this in the overlock you may have to just kind of move them a little bit and what that does is it kind of helps with the fabric slippage sometimes your fabric underneath will slip and you'll come up here at the end and you'll have two different lengths. You want to try to keep those as stable as possible. Okay, that's pretty good. Put one pin up here. So now my presser foot is about three quarter wide. So that's why I pin just on the outside of that. And I won't really have to unpin. I'll probably have to reposition this one or take this one out and that's okay. When you come around this edge, you may have to stop and reposition, stop and reposition. Um, you don't want to try to, I'm going to try to get around in one swoop, but you'll really have to hold on to that area and move the fabric in that curved direction around your needles, your cutter edge, um, because you don't really want to stretch that out. So if you have to stop and then reposition and then sew, reposition and sew, um, that's okay. You don't really want to be stretching this out too much. Okay, so I'm all ready to sew. I'm going to go over to the overlock and I'm using a double needle for thread. Okay, so we have the uh, front center center front seam um, sewn. And before I actually turn it, I, I could have done this and mentioned it before, um, but I didn't want to confuse you. Is it now that we have still have these face sides together, I'm trying to separate these face sides together, we can actually go ahead and sew up this center back seam. And uh, I could have done that at the serger. So if you're watching this before you make this, you could actually pin this here and go ahead and um, sew that as well. So I'm going to do that really quick and then we'll come back right back here. Okay, so now I've got the center front seam and the center back seam. Go ahead and have a look at that, kind of somewhere in the light. There it is. And now I'm going to just go ahead and remove these pins. Um, and then we will turn the lining and everything face side out. 
So we'll just go ahead and hide that seam that we just made. So now if you're lining it with a different fabric, uh, swimwear lining, halenka or some other very lightweight lining. So there we go, that's the uh, outside. Let me go ahead and lay this so we can actually see. Come on, there we go, that's what it looks like. Now, um, so that's what it will look like. Um, now I'm gonna turn this to where the lining is and it's kind of flopping around in there. So I wanna make sure that my edges of the lining kind of match up. Now you can baste these down if you wanna throw it into your sewing machine. Um, stitch on a very long stitch so that you can pull it out. You'll either pull it out or pop it out. I'm just gonna pin this here on this edge because we're actually going to prepare the elastics now, get ready for those. Um, and I think I'm going to do the leg first. Let me turn this inside out so you can see that. Okay, so this is the lining side and I just kind of have these pinned up here, the lining. And I'm not gonna worry about finishing this lining edge. You can if you want, but um, you know, knits, jersey knits like this don't really unravel. And once we get the uh, elastics folded over, you're not even really gonna see that edge anyway. So uh, I don't bother with finishing that edge. So I'm just gonna pin the lining in here so it doesn't flop around. And what's nice about this is that that center seam is completely enclosed and it's really not gonna cause you any kind of irritation there. So I'm gonna just kind of keep that pin for the time and I'm gonna work with it in the overlock um, when we do the elastic so I don't have to do that extra step. So I'm just gonna keep it pinned for now. But I'm gonna set this aside and we're going to actually prepare the elastics. Okay, so uh, we're ready to work with the elastics and I removed my cutting board. I thought you could see the elastic a little bit better. So um, what we need to do, I've already cut this and we're going to make a ring. So it's gonna be a ring like this and you wanna make sure that there aren't any twists in it. So um, you'll just have to double check because now I've got a, like an infinity ring where it just is twisted and you can't undo it. So uh, make sure that you sew correctly. And I'm just going to mark a half inch in on either side and we'll just overlap the elastic. And we're gonna do that on both the waist elastic and the leg area, um, the outer pouch and the lower waistband area. So just mark a half inch on each of those ends. Let's get this one here and this kind of hard to sew because it's such a short area. But on this one, I'll show you on this one really quick. So we're gonna overlap this and we're gonna match up. Oh, I see I had one of my red marks on the opposite side, but that's okay. We can kind of see it. We'll just match up those marks. And what you're gonna do is, so this is where the mark is. You'll see me do this in the machine. What I'll do is I'll sew, let me see, is it gonna focus? Sew here, straight across, and then I'll probably also do a zigzag um, horizontally here, perpendicular to that stitch line, because just because this is so narrow and I don't want it to pull out, okay? And then on this one, the waist, I'm just gonna overlap these and stitch straight down on that mark and make sure that you don't have it twisted again. Okay, so over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now that I've got the elastics um, sewn together, I'm actually just going to sep uh, divide them now. So for the waistband elastic, I'm just going to divide into fourths by fol folding in half. And I'm gonna mark this with a pin, with pins. So there is half of that, then match that pin up to the center back seam. We're gonna use that uh, where we sewed it together as a center back, and then we're gonna put pins on either side of the elastic that will be considered our side seams. So this one I'm marking with pins just because it's larger. And the smaller one that goes around the outer pouch 
and the lower waistband, I'm gonna mark with a pin. So I kind of buried my mark in my stitching. So this is where we sewed it together. So I've uh, marked that center back. I'm gonna fold there, fold it in half gently, don't stretch. And then I'm gonna mark there. And then I'm gonna match up those two marks. And again, just like we did with the waistband, find those the other four. So this isn't really the side seam because we're uh, putting it around the leg area that's already been divided into fourths for you. That's what that notch is that I pointed out in the beginning. Okay, and this is a erasable marker, um, but we won't see it anyway. So now I've got all my four markings on that. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go and uh, getting this onto the garment. Okay, so we will actually work with the um, uh, outer pouch and lower waistband elastic first. So uh, I've got my garment here. I'm going to keep it turned, try to keep it turned um, inside out. So I've got my elastic. This is going to be the uh, center back. And so let's find the center back here. We also want to make sure that when we're putting this on that we don't actually um, get the suit itself or the garment itself. I tend to call these suits like a swimsuit. Um, we don't want to get that twisted in a ring that because you'll have to either make a whole new one or you will have to rip everything out. Okay, so here's the center back seam. And so I'm going to match, um, match, where am I in the camera? Match the center back mark on top of that seam. And we'll be sewing this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in that direction. And then I'm going to walk around, be careful not to stretch your fabric, walk this elastic around and find that notch and the next mark is going to be where you're going to match that up to. So I'll go ahead and pin this. Now after you get this all pinned around, you may need to repin for working with it in the um, overlock. So now I'm gonna continue to kind of walk around and I'll, this is the next not, uh, mark on the elastic. So I'm gonna match that to the seam on the pouch, the bottom of the pouch. And I'll pin that there. And then continue walking around the garment. Make sure your elastic stays um, untwisted. So keep it in that same flat way um, that you've been matching it and then match it up the next mark to the other notch. Okay, so now I've got that all pinned around and just double check that you have it so it's not twisted anywhere. And um, when you work with this in the overlock to get it joined, you're gonna be stretching this and some a little bit. And so sometimes these pins will come out because they're pinned that way in the direction of the sewing. So sometimes I will just take this and I will repin it. I can get it in there and pin it at a diagonal, a slight diagonal. So that will keep it from like not pulling out all the way. So this doesn't have a, so the elastic in this is not super tight because the um, measurement around the area is already pretty snug. And, it, and so that's how I designed it to work with your body. So I'm just going around and repinning it. Now, you see, remember where I have the lining pinned. I'm gonna repin that as well. This is the last um, part of the elastic that I need to repin. So I need to repin this lining and um, I'm actually gonna work with this with the elastic on the top. Sometimes I, when I work with the elastic, I put the elastic on the feed dogs, but this time I'm gonna have the elastic on the top. So for the lining, I'm gonna actually pin, put the pin in perpendicular to the edge because all, I will need to remove that. Just make sure everything, your lining matches up to the edge. Of course, like I mentioned before, you could have done a basting stitch to hold everything together. I just wanted to eliminate that step for the just for the time of the tutorial okay so those are all repinned so now you're just going to have to work with this in the machine you see i have a little bit of stretch 
in there. So you're gonna stretch this to fit the garment. And then sometimes it's a, a little bit of a, it's a good idea generally to stretch a little bit further, even though uh, sometimes at the end when you get the finished product, it looks a little bit wavy. But when you stretch a little bit more with and stretch the elastic with the garment fabric, that actually helps it fit over your body a little bit better instead of popping seams. So I'm going to get this into the overlock and I know that I speed that uh, section up. So we're just joining the elastic to the garment and I'm gonna be, I removed one of my needles so I'm using a single needle three thread and I've switched my stitch length to the longest length because we just need to get the elastic joined. If you don't feel like um, removing the extra needle in your uh, machine, you can keep it at a double needle. Just understand that it might add a little bit more bulk. Um, but I'm using a uh, really lightweight fabric here, so I don't want it to add any more bulk, okay? So I'm going to get this joined to the garment, and I'll be right back after that. Okay, so we got that elastic on, and actually even I had to go slow because this fabric is really slippery. Um, it doesn't help me out a, at all, but hopefully you won't have that much trouble. So we've got this on, and so now I wanna work with the waist elastic. So again, this is face side out. Let me make sure everything is inside out and get that waist part, and uh, we will turn the elastic together. Um, we'll turn the waist, the waist elastic and the other, the lower elastic at the same time. So here's the center back. Grab my waistband, okay? And I'm going to actually, I forgot, I didn't have, I don't have marks for you. So what I have to do is I have to fold this in half, center front to center back, right? And then I'm going to match the center back and center front marks to find my side seams just like on everything else when we divide into fourths mark this with a pin and then the other side with a pin and when you do this just be careful not to stretch the fabric okay and I'm going to start at the center back just like I always do find that center back seam here line that up with the seam here and let's see i'll be sewing this way so i want to pin in the direction that i'm sewing so i can pull those out and then i'm just going to walk around and match up the next pins and i'm just going to use this top one here and again you can um, repin these so i'm going to continue to walk around and i've already switched my lining pin to be per perpendicular because i don't want to forget to pull that out so let's see, this has to go this way. Kind of doing this backwards in the camera today. And then one last pin to match in this, it's right here. And again, you just wanna double and triple check that you don't have your elastic twisted or the garment twisted around. Um, I did that recently on a tank top I was making and um, I think I've just decided to make a whole new one instead of ripping it out. Okay, so I've got my waist elastic all pinned. Um, I'm gonna start here at the center back. And again, like I did before, you can actually do this at a diagonal. Um, these pins, that's holding it in because um, if you pull it, the, the pin may come out. I'm gonna remove these marking pins. I'm gonna leave the ones in the lining because I don't want that to shift around. 
in this. This is another a mark pin here. And of course, you'll still just work with the elastic while you're in the overlock. So you will need to stretch this. You see there's a little bit of stretch to go in here, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna get this overlocked and I will be right back. Okay, so we have the elastics, all the elastics applied. So now what we need to do is we just need to turn the elastics and then a top stitch them down. Now today, I'm going to be using a cover stitch machine. Um, and the difference between that and a zigzag, I usually zigzag a lot of things. So when you turn your pieces over, the zigzag you will be seeing the inside and that's how I usually do it. But using a cover stitch, you don't see the inside. You actually sew directly on the top of the outside of the garment. So um, I usually speed up the sewing, um, but when I first get into the cover stitch machine, um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the machine once I get over there. So um, I asked everybody on my Instagram channel if they wanted me to zigzag or cover stitch, and I got an overwhelming um, cover stitch. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm at Robert Joseph Sewing, um, and I usually post updates and little tidbits there. So go ahead and give me a follow there. So uh, since I'm using the cover stitch, I'm actually, um, I like to turn this over. So I'm gonna actually turn these over at the same time. I'm not gonna sew them at the same time, but um, again, you'll need to fold here at the edge of the elastic and fold to the inside. And then I like to put a pin here. Generally, I like to put the pin in the direction of sewing like that. So if I were sewing with a regular machine, it would be sewing this way. But today I'm gonna to be sewing with a cover stitch, so I'm gonna to have to repin this. So I'm gonna put this perpendicular this way, and I'll probably have to pin this one differently. In fact, on these lower ones, when I use the cover stitch or even the zigzag, I don't generally pin. Um, I just fold it as I go, but you're gonna to have to stretch a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over the, the center front and the center back and make sure that your edge of elastic here um, on the top of your elastic is flush. You've got a nice roll there that you don't have any um, extra fabric, you know, between the elastic um, and the, that there's no extra fabric um, past that elastic ridge. So I'm going to pin that there this way. And of course, you'll have to move, take out your pins before you get there. So I'm going to pin this. I kind of gently roll it over and you see there's extra there. What I did on this side was where the lining was, was I kind of folded it so it went straight down and you kind of generally feel with your hands. So that's the thing with the cover stitch machine is that you will have to feel with your finger where the edge of the fabric is because the idea is that the underside of the cover stitch just covers this overlocking here. So let me get a couple more pins in this waist. Somewhere here on the side. Let's do that lining again uh, area. So I'll fold it straight down on top of that lining. And this way I don't really have to re-pin this section. I mean, you could do the same with the um, other two. I don't generally pin a lot. I tend to stick myself and then I, my fingers start feeling like a pin cushion. So here's the bottom. So since I'm cover stitching, I'm gonna have to uh, kind of repin this, but that's the idea. So um, I'll just have to repin this on the face side here. And just kind of generally kind of find out where that is and fold it straight onto itself. See, I think I can do this pretty quickly, or maybe not.
Okay, so I sped the rest of the pinning up for you. So this is what it's um, going to look like um, on the outside. So you have all these pins. So that's another reason why I don't like to pin because as I sew, I stick myself. Um, and then you have to stop and remove the pins when you can actually just feel um, where you need to turn it, uh, turn it over. Now, you will need to stretch as you sew, whether you're zigzagging or cover stitching, because you need to make sure that elastic um, matches at least the size of the garment again. And we stretched a little bit further. Don't, you know, stretch uh, a huge amount because then you'll really get a wavy, um, kind of this area of the elastic will come out wavy after you're sewing, but you just wanna make sure that you're stretching it. You can kind of see that you need to stretch the elastic back in there to make sure it comes back to the size of the garment or the fabric, okay? So I think I'm going to, what am I gonna do first? I think I will do, just like I applied the elastic, I think I'm gonna do this outer elastic one first. So I'll do around the pouch in the lower, and then I'm gonna do the waistband, and that'll just be in one video shoot. So I will actually come back with a finished garment, but we're gonna go one step further after that. So um, right now, I'm gonna get my cover stitch all ready to go. I'll talk, you, talk to you in just the beginning, and then the rest of that will be sped up. Okay, so we're here at the cover stitch machine, and um, like I said before, I have to sew on the face side of the fabric, and this is the center back, and I'm probably just gonna start right um, just before that stitch line. And I think I might have to remove <laughs> some of these pins over on this side. Um, we'll see when we get there, um, because I, it, they may come in competition with the foot, so we'll see. Um, now, a couple of things. I have a piece of tape here, and that's my uh, guide for my waistband. So up here, I have an inch waistband, so I have it set to the edge of the waistband here, and that's where that's the guide that I'm gonna use. And the idea is that you see this far needle here where I'm pointing to? So that stitch comes just on this side, uh, the outer edge of the a waistband elastic so that's um, that's actually the the uh, challenge or that's the point of this is to cover that area so if you don't and it comes up here it's okay don't worry about it but this is the guide um, that will help us keep that stitching equal distance from the edge of the waistband here okay so if you're working with a really super stretchy fabric like I, I am you'll have to probably go slow and just reposition yourself a lot now when I come to do the lower elastic which is the 3 8 I won't I don't have a guide in fact this actually comes underneath the presser foot if I put it here uh, and then I feel with my finger where the edge of that elastic is um, um, here on the underside, this edge where the overlocking is, that's what I'm looking for, is that this uh, fabric doesn't even extend past my presser foot. So I'll have to look for a guide and it looks like this point here on the edge of the presser foot, I may be able to use that as a guide. Um, so when you're cover stitching, you will have to use your fingers. You have to use a lot of your fingers and a lot of parts of your hand because you will have to feel where that edge is because you wanna line that edge. Maybe I can show you the uh, indentation. You see the edge of this uh, elastic here folded under? You wanna align that edge about with the needle here in the far left hand here so that's where you want to be guiding and you'll have to feel with your fingers and that's what I usually do without the pins because I'm gonna have to pull a lot of these pins out to actually sew the other thing that I want you to be aware of is the needle um, themselves so I have two needles in here and then underneath let's see if I can um, see if you can see the and undo this really quick and then underneath here is the looper so I'm not going to move anything this isn't a tutorial on how to use the cover stitch I just want to show you so there's one thread um, for the looper which is here and then I'll close this back up and put my tape back down and then I have two threads one for each of the needles now you could do a wider um, needle I could have a third needle right over here um, you could even do three needle but understand if you do a three needle it's really going to stretch out that elastic and then you'll get a kind of wavering effect but you could have a wider um, width of the needle so the width between the needles is called gauge and this gauge is about one-eighth of an inch and for these you know little bikinis and jock straps that I do I like this narrow 
um, stitch, I think I, it looks nice. And today I'm using this contrasting thread, this neon green. I think it's kind of fun to work with that blue. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, I'm going to start with the, the um, do I want to start with the waistband? No, I said before I'm going to actually start with the smaller one because I will have to feel around. So I'm going to start here um, at the center back, um, cover stitching the narrow elastic, okay? So, and I will actually be speeding this up. So here I go. Okay, so all of the cover stitching is done all the way um, around. And if we see on the inside, that's what your stitching should look like. And then on the outside, uh, let's see if I can get this in the light here, right there. And all the way around. And that color combination is kind of fun. So now, if you don't want to do the back strap that goes here from the, from the bottom of the pouch to the center back, you are done. Give this a try on and see how you feel about it. But I did mention that I will go ahead and show you how to do that. Now I have my pattern piece here and the piece cut. If you're going to make it out of the fabric, so cut your piece and then you're going to fold it in half lengthwise face side together and then we will overlock this long edge and then we're going to use a loop turner to turn it inside out. Now if you don't want to um, use the fabric you can, if I can get some of this unrolled, I have very little of this left. This is clear elastic. Um, you could use that. Just understand that this isn't terribly strong. You could also use a regular piece of elastic, um, uh, a decorative elastic, um, to go between here, the center back and the pouch. And that's what I actually used um, to put on the mannequin. And that was just so that you kind of couldn't even see the strap because I really kind of, um, the way I designed this was actually to be worn without the strap. But I wanted to provide um, a strap for you so just in case um, you wanted a little bit more security. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to, like I said before, fold this strap piece in half lengthwise and we'll overlock this long edge. Okay, so I have my little strap here all um, overlocked together. Um, and now I'm just going to turn it. And I've got my little loop turner. It's got the hook on the end and then this little hinge here that actually closes the fabric onto the hook. So insert this all the way. And I hook to the opposite side of the sewing and I like to actually kind of push that little handle through the fabric and then it closes on itself and then give yourself some tension here by pulling and then you can kind of feel it turn to the inside this one's actually pretty easy because it's stretch it kind of rolls right to the face side once it comes out you can get rid of the turner and just kind of pull this 
Now, if you feel like this strap is too long or it's too stretchy, actually go ahead and just make it, you know, the length that you need. And the way you would do that is first, so what I'm gonna do, so there it is, it's all turned face side out. It's a very tiny strap. You could make it wider if you wanted to. You can do anything you want, or you can just use a piece of elastic. But again, I designed this to um, be worn with that. So I'm gonna actually sew it to the bottom of the pouch first. Okay, there. So let me go ahead and pin that on so you can see that. So I'll sew it here to the bottom of the pouch. So that's pinned there. Okay, I'm gonna do this all at the same time in the uh, mirror. So here, it's at the bottom of the pouch. Okay, now if you're unsure if this is going to be too long or too short for you, then just sew it to the bottom pouch, uh, try this on, and then match up the amount to the center back that you need. So, um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this straight onto the center back so you can see it. So I've matched it here to the center back, and also make sure that you're not twisting this, unless you want the twistedness. But one thing you do want to make sure is that you don't actually accidentally get your waistband twisted around when you sew that on. Otherwise, your waistband will be twisted. So another thing to consider. So I have it here. The face side is out. I can see the inside. And then what I do is I just kind of fold that strap up to the center back. And I'm just gonna kind of pin this in place. I can reposition when I'm in the um, sewing machine. Okay, so I just kind of got it pinned there loosely. And then once I get to the machine, I can kind of reposition where I want it to go. So I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and I'm gonna stitch straight across here and then also on this side here. And this again is just for those of you who want the strap. Okay, so the uh, back strap is on, and you saw me struggle there a little bit. So uh, my machine, like most home sewing machines, do not like to back stitch um, with knits on knits. So what I did is I stitched forward, I put the needle down, and then I lifted the presser foot and I pivoted all the way back around, and then I stitched forward again. And I did kind of have to tug from the back to get it to go through because this is a lot of thickness on knit, and most home sewing machines don't like working with thicknesses on knits because the knit stretches, um, but the top part won't move through underneath the foot so you just kind of have to help it out a little bit so if you put that strap on you got all this done congratulations on your sling sack have a lot of fun with this once you get going it doesn't really take a lot of time to make these so that is the sling sack um, with the optional strap in the back. If you got this far, congratulations. Um, this is a fun little suit to make. Once you get going with these, they don't take very much time to make at all. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. By subscribing, you will find out whenever I release a new video. And when I release a new video, that means I've released a new pattern. Also follow me on Instagram at Robert Joseph Sewing. And as always, thank you for watching this tutorial and be well.